Welcome back, everyone. Here is the news for today. Still with me, Vanessa. Myanmar board leader discuss international security conference in Moscow. Myanmar junta leader, senior general Ming Ong Leng, talks to delegate of the International Security Conference in Moscow because it is important for the international community to keep shared values and unite for peace and stability. While earlier, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu tells Ming Ong that Moscow is committed to strengthening military ties with Myanmar. Right activists have accused Moscow of legitimizing Myanmar's military junta, which came to power in February 1st coup by continuing bilateral visits and armed deals. In addition, Russia says in March it was deeply concerned by the rising number of civilian deaths in Myanmar. Defense ties between two countries have grown in recent years with Moscow, providing army training and university scholarship to thousands of soldiers, as well as selling arms to a military blacklisted by several Western countries. Indonesia prepares tents and space beds outside hospital for COVID-19 victims after cases increase in the country. Minister of Health says Indonesian Medical Emergency Unit in the Greater Jakarta area set up tents outside the hospital and create more space beds for COVID-19 to increase hospital capacity amid a surge in coronavirus cases. The world's fourth most populous nation reports that overall coronavirus cases topped 2 million this week. The virus surge has piled pressure on fragile healthcare system, with hospitals in some cities nearing full capacity, while hundreds of healthcare workers have tested positive for the respiratory disease, and at least 10 who were fully vaccinated have died. As more cases of the highly transmissible Delta variant are detected across the archipelago and with low testing and minimal contact tracing, public health experts have warned that Indonesia could be at risk of suffering the sort of explosion in cases that India recently saw. Jakarta prepares the new cemetery for cremation of COVID-19 victims. Drone footage shows new burials at a cemetery designated for COVID-19 victims in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta as cases hit a record high. According to data from the country's health ministry, that Indonesia records its biggest daily increase in coronavirus cases with 20,574 infections, taking the country's total daily to 2,055,995 cases and 55,949 deaths. This week, the country records 7,505 new infections. Jakarta is the worst hit area in Indonesia. According to the data from Jakarta COVID-19 Task Force website, that the capital city has recorded an average of over 130 burials per day from June 60 to 21, take total of 7,200 COVID-19-related burials have been recorded since March last year. Indonesia has the highest number of coronavirus cases and deaths from COVID-19 in Southeast Asia. Malaysia to extend lockdown measures because cases continue to spread in the country. The state news agency Bernama reported quoting of Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin that Malaysia will extend the current restrictive measures beyond in a proposal to slow down the spread of COVID-19. Muhyiddin did not say how long the nationwide lockdown will be extended. He had previously stated that the restrictions will not be lifted until daily cases fell below 4,000. The occupancy rate of hospitals' ICU beds was less than 75%, and at least 10% of the population completed two doses of COVID-19 vaccination. A nation lockdown has been effective since June 1st, which means all economic and social activities except essential services and should last until mid-June, but the government decided to extend the restrictive measures. Since earlier June, the number of new cases of COVID-19 confirmed in a single day in Malaysia has dropped, but they are still above 5,000. 
Malaysia reports 5,803 new confirmed cases of COVID-19, bringing the total tally to 728,462. An additional 81 deaths from the coronavirus epidemic are reported in the Southeast Asian country, bringing the overall death toll to 4,884. Filipino citizens farewell with former President Benigno Aquino. Hundreds of mourners wearing black and white and face masks attend the funeral mass and a burial ceremony. Among those paying respects to Aquino was Vice President and political ally Lenny Robredo and close friends. Most supporters were blocked at the entrance of the cemetery to prevent mass gathering and the spread of COVID-19. Aquino died in a Manila hospital of renal failure as a result of diabetes. Former Philippine President Benigno Aquino was laid to rest beside his parents, two of Southeast Asian countries' democracy icons in a Manila cemetery. He started as a president of the Philippines from 2010 to 2016 and he rode a wave of public support to the presidency after the 2009 death of his mother, the revered people power leader Corazon Aquino who was herself president from 1986 until 1992. His namesake father, a staunch critic of dictator Ferdinand Marcos, was assassinated when he returned home from political exile in 1983, planting the seeds for the 1986 People Power Revolution that boosted the strong men out of office. Aquino, who led a private life after stepping down, is survived by four sisters. Thailand announces new restrictions after clusters appear in construction area. Thailand announces new restrictions around its capital in a bid to tackle the country's worst coronavirus outbreak. According to a document published in the country's Royal Gazette, the new measures will be implemented for 30 days include a ban on restaurant dine-ins in Bangkok capital and five surrounding provinces. The document says shopping malls in Bangkok and five provinces must be closed by 9 p.m. and parties or celebrations or activities involving a gathering of more than 20 people will be banned for the same duration. It also says construction sites in the six areas will be shut down and workers' camps will be sealed off to contain clusters. The order followed the emergency of more clusters in construction camps in the capital, which has 575 such sites housing about 81,000 workers. Since May, 37 clusters have been found in Bangkok camps. The document says authorities will set up checkpoints in Bangkok and the five provinces to limit travels and relocation of construction workers, adding that there will be also checkpoints in the country's four southern provinces near Malaysia. South Korea halt drills prevents terrorism attacks using drones. Police in Seoul simulates respond to a drone attack in a security drill that comes amid the growing use of armed drones in international warfare. The exercise showcased three attack scenarios, two of them involving special forces responding to simulate explosives and chemical attacks from a drone with police using a weapon to jam the attack drone signals. Another exercise involved showing how a police drone does reconnaissance work. There are terror attacks using drones happening periodically around the world, and we have seen appearances of an unauthorized drones gradually increasing in Seoul. Therefore, we planned this drill as there are going threats of new type of terrorism against the city of Seoul, such as terrorism with explosives or chemical using drones. Police official says they carry out the drill with five other national organizations to maximize a coordinated effort against what they called possible drone terrorism.
China calls on G20 members to advance the spirit of partnership and for joint efforts. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi calls on a group of 20 G20 members to promote the spirit of partnership and put forward suggestions for joint effort. Wang made the remarks when attending a conference of the G20 foreign ministers via video link in Beijing. The global epidemic situation is still grave and economic recovery is clearly disparate. And he also says G20 members should uphold unity and cooperation and exert leadership in the global fight against the epidemic. They need to accelerate the implementation of the results of the Global Health Summit, strengthen cooperation in vaccines, diagnosis and treatment, joint prevention and control, and provide more support to developing countries. China has so far provided more than 450 million doses of vaccines to nearly 100 countries, calling on nations with the ability to reject export restrictions or overstocking and make contributions to eliminate the immunization gap. Wong called on the G20 members to uphold multilateralism and contribute to the stability of the international order. The G20 members should take the lead in practicing true multilateralism and firmly safeguard the global system with the United Nations as the court and the international order based on the international law. China and African countries jointly launched the initiative of partnership for Africa's development and welcome more nations and international organizations to join. China supports United Nations distribute fair COVID-19 vaccine to other countries. Chinese envoy Cheng Su at the 47th regular session of the UN Human Rights Council Monday in Geneva says China supports the United Nations calls for fair distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. Chen adds, China's permanent representative to the UN office at Geneva, COVID-19, which is still spreading around the world, has had seriously negative impacts on the economic and social development of countries, especially developing countries. He also says, the pandemic has revealed the importance of economic, social and cultural rights, as well as the importance of solidarity and cooperation among countries. China calls on capable countries to actively participate in international cooperation to help developing nations achieve sustainable development and effectively mitigate the impacts of COVID-19. At this session, many developing countries, including Nepal and Colombia, expresses their gratitude to China for providing vaccine assistance to developing countries. Xi Jinping congratulates the 70th anniversary of the Cambodian People Party's feast. General Secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, Xi Jinping, sent a congratulatory message to Samdek Teko Hun Sen, President of the Cambodian People's Party, on the 70th anniversary of the CPP's founding. In his message, she says that on the occasion of the 70th anniversary of the CPP's founding, he would like to extend warm congratulations to Hun Sen, the CPP and the Cambodian people on behalf of the CPC and the Chinese people, as well as in his own name. The CPP has uniting and leading the Cambodian people in advancing the cause of national construction and development, making positive contributions to the regional stability and prosperity. China, as always, will support Cambodia in pursuing a development path that suits its national conditions. She stressed that China and Cambodia are staunch friends and a community with a shared future, with their relations having long enjoyed high-level development. Since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the two sides have pulled together and helped each other and have vividly illustrated their unbreakable and everlasting friendship with concrete actions. And that's the wrap-up. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a lovely weekend.